നമസ്കാരം ഇന്നത്തെ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സീരീസിലേക്ക് ഞാൻ എല്ലാവരെയും സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇന്ന് വളരെ സന്തോഷം വളരെ ഹാപ്പി ബിക്കോസ് വി ഹാവ് നിലേഷ് സാർ വിത്ത് എസ് നിലേഷ ഹീസ് ഐ വിൽ സ്പീക്ക് ഫ്രം ഇംഗ് സ്പീക്ക് ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഫ്രം ഹിയർ ഓൺ വേൾഡ് സോ നിലേഷ് സാർ ഈസ് മാനേജിംഗ് ഡയറക്ടർ ഓഫ് കൊടാക് മഹീന്ദ്ര മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ദേ ആർ ടോപ്പ് ഫൈവ് ടോപ്പ് ഫൈവ് എ എം സി ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് ദേ ഹാവ് എ ഇ എം മോർ ദൻ ഫോർ ലാക്ക് റോർ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് പ്രിവിലേജ് ടു ഹോസ്റ്റ് യു ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് ഫോർ ടേക്കിംഗ് ഔട്ട് യുവർ ടൈം വെൻ യു കം ടു കൊച്ചി ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ ഓണർ സർ It's my pleasure to be here, Nikhil. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I have always uh, uh, you know, seen that the way you, how much you are uh, committed to this business. And uh, sometimes I feel that uh, um, uh, I don't have any passion because when I see the way you are showing your passion, I mean, my passion to um, this business is not enough. Uh, and uh, it's a great role model you have been uh, for doing this business. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, and if you can uh, quickly introduce uh, yourself and your company from there we can uh, take it up sure so i am nilesh uh, i am working at kotak mutual fund as nikhil mentioned we are top 5 asset management company of india with assets of more than 470000 crore but what is most important to me we are custodian of about 65 lakh people's dreams aspirations we aim to provide financial security to them nikhil bhai in our culture we have been told money is not everything money doesn't matter uh, many a times parents believe kids are their retirement solution they are their retirement planning and while most indian kids do take good care of their parent every rule has an exception and which is why providing financial security providing financial freedom that becomes the passion we all get very well paid in our job but if we do our job well we also collect blessings of our satisfied investors money and blessings together that drives us and very good very good. So, yeah i think that is a, a one interesting thing when we go home back we get good sleep and uh, yes. when we come uh, to office in the morning we have that energy to uh, come and do the job absolutely yeah and sir when i look at your career a uh, 25 years plus career and one thing which i i have seen is that you started with a very humble background and um, uh, i have uh, read that uh, one article uh, 50 rupees uh, Uh, first salary or first uh, statement uh, during your uh, ca time then you got a gold medal and then you now you are one of the highest paid uh, um, mutual fund uh, 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 professional in india and i think uh, that itself is a uh, inspiration if you can talk about that will be good for our audience to listen sure <laughs> so my father died when i was very young and he was working in a mill so didn't leave a lot of money uh, my mother took care of all of us by working outside she was housewife and used to work 12 18 hours a day all 7 days a week but she ensured that we studied i was so lucky that i had a school principal who said i will pay your fees as long as you top the class when i went to college uh, again i studied on scholarships all throughout my life i have received support of kind people and that's where i have reached where i am uh, many people say you are very humble nikhil bhai in our market whenever we have tried showing ego market has crashed us <laughs> so we have fallen so many times that now we have become humble it's a hard earned lesson <laughs> but uh, what i have realized if you have right objective then the whole world comes together to support you one way or other uh, like i used to work and earn livelihood while studying 
and I had always limited number of days to study. And I had a friend who will come and tell me, this is the portion you study, rest you can leave. Okay. And I will exactly study what he will tell me. And I will always score more marks than he had scored. But gold medal with that only, I think I don't know if it's possible. So again, uh, I was studying in a library and we used to run three stairs up to pick up a particular spot where you will be least disturbed. And from 7 in the morning till 8.15 in the night, we will study in Petit Library in Mumbai. And again, there were so many friends who came together. You could borrow someone's book, you could solve your queries, and uh, gold medal happened. Okay. But it happened because we were studying together. Again, so many people supported you in terms of what to study and what to leave. Okay, okay, great, great. You know, I think uh, uh, now, uh, especially in Kerala or this part of the world, we have a lot of uh, students thinking that uh, uh, this is not the place they have to be here. They have to either go to abroad. I'm not against that because Kerala is always like that because we are uh, blessed with the uh, uh, money coming from NRIs and everything. But now situation is different because uh, people are going to Europe uh, and there is a very less chance that they are, they are going to come back here because they are going to get the citizenship there because they are, they are not seeing good side of India and what is the opportunity they have in India. Uh, I think I think your career will be a good thing and your advice on this uh, will be appreciated. So, in 90s when I started my career at ICICI, they had sent me to JP Morgan Singapore and I was ranked at 5% of JP Morgan staff worldwide. Mm -hmm. So, for a kid who had studied in vernacular medium, who barely knew how to operate a computer because I had seen computer for the first time when I joined ICICI. And in three months time to reach top 5% of employees worldwide in JP Morgan was indeed a matter of pride. And obviously they offered me a job there, but I wanted to come back to India. Obviously I had no idea that career in India will be so good. Singapore was a nice place, but I thought I should be in my motherland. I should not be settling abroad. There's nothing right or wrong about it. There is better infrastructure abroad, but there is better opportunities in India. From 47 till 1990, I can understand people going abroad for better opportunities. But post-1990 liberalization of India has created many opportunities and now multiple things are available. So be a global citizen, but always keep roots in India. Okay, great, great, great to hear that. And uh, you have started in stock market very early stage of your life. And I, I have read that uh, you talked about initially you also get into some kind of a trading and everything. And now you are more on to, uh, and I know that long time investing only, but uh, what all the things you have done then and how you become a long time person? So Nikhil Bhai, a good you by working in Hamam Street, which is right behind Dalal Street, it was bound that you will get sucked into the trading. Uh, this was the time of early 90s, markets were crazy and you thought, you will become very, very rich overnight. You had no idea what stock market was. You had no idea what research was. You were simply reading newspaper, talking to people and jumping onto it. Undoubtedly, a fool and his money cannot stay for long together. And I lost a lot of money. In those days, there were a lot of money, not today. But that was a very good experience. That loss kind of pushed me to move in the right direction. I wanted to understand what market was, how things were operating. And fortunately, when I moved around, I got a lot of good advice. I still remember one advice. Someone told me that in Dalal Street, we do Lakshmi Pujan once a year on Diwali night. But we do Saraswati Pujan every day. 
you have to do research, research, research. The other advice which came very handy, Bhav Bhagwan, price has everything, price is God, don't stand against market. Those earthy wisdom pushed me to go towards more professional research. And fortunately, I started working in ICICI, which gave me exposure. I learned a lot from my colleagues there. Then I was lucky to join Templeton. Again, learned a lot, lot of tricks there. Then came to ICICI Prudential. Great set of people who taught me a lot. And then slowly, slowly you started going deeper and deeper into it. And now I realize that investment is all about common sense. It's not uh, creating Excel sheets and, you know, doing a lot of data crunching. It's more about, can you analyze a company and its trajectory on one piece of paper? When you have to speak for two hours, you don't need any preparation. When you have to speak for five minutes, you have to work two hours to write those sentences. Same thing is in investment. Your thesis should not be more than one page. Of course, to prepare that one page, you may have to apply one year also. No, that, that's a great advice. And uh, how do you uh, really define a mutual fund as a uh, and uh, you know as a class? And uh, because we have a stock market, it's a uh, vast thing. And I think entry can be, we can call it as a mutual fund or ETF. So, can you talk about mutual fund in your words, which others can understand? So, basically mutual fund is a double-decker bus. It stops at various places and goes from one destination to another. And if you are travelling in your car, you will always outperform bus. But if you don't know driving, then bus is far better rather than the car you will end up smashing your car and creating an accident. Mutual fund is a collective vehicle. It takes money from lots of investors for a defined purpose. Fund managers professionally manage to achieve that purpose. And uh, obviously it's minimizing risk or optimizing risk rather than maximizing return. But people who don't have time who don't have energy, who don't have knowledge, who lack discipline, for the mutual fund is the best option to financial freedom. Okay, okay. And in mutual fund, we have SIP is a common word. I don't think that uh, anyone need any explanation. People know SIP but uh, yeah. may not know mutual fund. And uh, what is uh, SIP and uh, your personal stories or something, it will be great. So, a lot of people say SIP is systematic investment plan. I will say SIP sab ichha ki purti. It's a kaam denu guy which can fulfill all your wishes. But SIP is Agni Pariksha also. In March 20, Nikhil Bayar SIP returns were negative for three years. They were lower than savings bank account for five years. They were lower than bank FD for ten years. At that point of time, many people panicked and stopped their SIP. They lost an opportunity. Some people panicked a lot and redeemed. They converted their notional loss to real loss. And then there were smart people who topped up. Today they are making far more money. So SIP is a no-nonsense product which converts little drops of water make an ocean in reality. Little drops of savings eventually builds your retirement kitty or your nest. But please remember that in SIP also you have to go through a wall of fire, especially when markets correct. When markets correct, you have to continue your SIP or you have to top up. You can't stop it. If you can go through that wall of fire, SIP is sab ichha ki purti. <laughs> And uh, when you say that Thabbicha ki purti, I think it's about uh, gold-based investing, what you are uh, yes. uh, uh, referring to. So, how important is to do a financial planning uh, uh, rather than just uh, picking up some fund and investing? Uh, so, financial planning is as important as going to doctor rather than chemist for shopping. When you become ill, you don't go to chemist and give symptoms and take money, uh, take medicine. 
you go to a doctor. Same thing is about financial planning. There are people who are very conservative but start believing that we can take huge risk when markets are good. Invariably, they will end up on the losing side. A financial planner is one who, like a skilled doctor, understands your symptoms, figures out what is your risk profile, and gives you a plan which you should follow diligently to build your financial health. Like you go to a doctor for treating your illness, you go to a financial planner for securing your financial health. Mm, correct. And uh, when we talk about uh, financial planning and everything, I think uh, insurance also play a big role. And uh, sometimes, um, especially our uh, part of the world, we have uh, insurance, sometimes it's uh, missold also. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in, the, in the structure of financial planning or in the structure of a person's life, how important is insurance and what all the insurance needed according to you? So one, is there a need for insurance? Undoubtedly, yes. Today we are all living in a world of uncertainty and we all want to keep our near and dear financially secured in case something wrong happens to us. That need can only be met by insurance. Everyone must buy that much term insurance cover which is needed to secure your family in case something wrong happens to you. But at the same time, please remember, buyer beware. When you go to buy insurance, many a times, instead of term insurance, you will end up getting ULIP. You have to be very, very careful about it. Insurance is protection, not investment. If you buy ULIP or some other insurance product, Please read terms and conditions carefully. My advice to customer will be by protection through term insurance, by investment through SIP. You know, this is where uh, sometimes we get uh, confused, right? Because we have a lot of uh, named products like a retirement product and child uh, plans and uh, you, you will get the number, this much of money you will be getting from this much of a period. Yeah, I'm not talking about IRR. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and uh, even in mutual fund also, we have something uh, beautiful products, uh, not pro uh, the method we have is a SWP. If you can talk about SWP and uh, what is that uh, 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 problem uh, along with the security on that product. Sure. So number one, there is no one in this world who is interested in making you rich other than your parent. So buyer beware. No matter how good your advisor or this distributor might be, please ask questions. Don't be afraid of showing your ignorance. What you don't understand, ask for clarification. This thing is absolutely needed so that you can understand what risk you are taking. There is no free lunch. Your returns will come subject to the risk you have taken. If you take low risk, you will generate lower return. If you take high risk, you will generate higher return. So, buyer beware. Please ask what you don't understand. Seek clarification till such time you get the clarity. Now, within mutual fund, there is a lot of transparency thanks to SEBI regulation. You will be able to understand what is fact and what is, in mutual fund we don't give fiction, but what is not so clear fact. In many other products, regulations are not that tight and hence there are some facts and some fictions. Seeking clarity, asking questions will help you differentiate noise from the fact. Now, mutual fund has a fantastic product called systematic withdrawal plan. Many of us are salaried employees and are getting regular salary. But once we retire, how do we get regular income? People think of putting money in bank deposits, debentures, corporate FD and keep on getting regular income. But that's heavily taxed. It will most probably underperform inflation and will give you negative real return. 
But if you invest in mutual fund, let's say hybrid fund, there are conservative hybrid, there are aggressive hybrid. And then put systematic withdrawal plan on it, you will continue to get regular income. Most of the time it will come from your income or appreciation. Sometimes it could come from your capital itself. But over a long period of time, it will deliver better post-tax return. It will deliver real return over most other instruments. SWP is like your salary in retirement. Mm, yeah, correct, correct. And uh, here, uh, when we talk about SWP or I think when we speak about SIP as a whole, uh, how do we diversify uh, uh, in our investment? So while on one side don't put all eggs in one basket is important, on other side it is also important to ensure that you don't over diversify. I have seen people who kept on opening mutual fund folios depending upon whosoever recommended. Now how will you monitor, how will you measure, how will you take corrective action? I think when you are looking for diversification, it can easily be achieved between 5 to 10 SIPs for a most investor. If you are very conservative, go for SIP in large cap fund, large and mid cap fund. If you are extremely aggressive, go for SIP in small cap fund, thematic fund, sector fund. And if you are average, you can try concentrated fund, large and mid cap fund, multi cap fund, flexi cap fund. Between this 5 to 10 numbers, your diversification need is met, your ability to manage your portfolio will remain very, very strong and most importantly, it will help you achieve your financial goals without too much of operational Janjat. And here, sometimes most of us start uh, investing with a 10,000 rupees SIP. And uh, here, uh, and sometimes 1,000 rupees, 10 uh, SIPs also will be there. And in that time, in more of a test in the water, uh, what is the kind of an allocation which you will recommend for a beginner? So, the biggest mistake people make is not to repeat what is good. Now, Nikhil, if you go to eat outside and you like particular restaurant, chances are that you are going to repeat it. Unfortunately, in investment, people don't end up repeating their good thing. Many years ago, when I was fund manager, HDFC Bank was a buzzing stock. It was growing rapidly. It had created a lot of wealth for shareholders. And as a fund manager, my whole objective was to find next HDFC bank, which will become as multi-bagger as that. And one day my boss told me that, Dilish, what are you searching for? HDFC bank itself creates one more HDFC bank every third year because they were growing at 30% plus. It's a tried, tasted model. Every third year, they'll deliver one new HDFC bank. Why do you want to search outside? In front of your eyes, it is available. Just keep buying that. Now, what a pearl of wisdom. We all behave like Kasturi Mrug. You know, in the Himalayas, there is a deer. Uh, Kastur, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, Kastur, in his body and itself, Kasturi is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the smell or Kasturi is in the body, but they keep on searching around. Same thing happens with us. SIP is a perfect instrument. But SIP amount should move in line with your investment objective, in line with your savings. I met a doctor. His need for SIP was about 10, 12 lakh a month. He was doing 15,000 rupee SIP, which he had started 10 years back. I simply said that, sir, this 10,000 rupees is not going to serve you anything. Why are you even doing it? Might as well stop. If you are serious, then please do 10 lakh rupee SIP. 
it's like you are a professional cricketer you have gone to play the match there is a asking run rate half volley comes and you just nudge it i mean you will be thrown out of the team for playing a shot like that your team will lose when half volley comes you have to hit for a six same thing in sip please keep on increasing sip with your investment objective and with your savings yeah, i have this problem because uh, uh, can you define that uh, what is that minimum a percentage of income should be allocated for sip in that case so nikhil bhai my thumb of rule is simple most people believe income minus expenses equal to savings i say reverse it income minus savings equal to expenses if i give x amount to my daughter as a pocket money i expect her to save something out of that and do sip is it going to make a big difference to her yes it is inculcating savings habit to them it's inculcating investment habits to them it's giving them good experience please do the same thing for your kids also and for yourself also i think the the, the best investment all of us can do is at our career increase a salary yes. <laughs> then not increase the income uh, expense along with that absolutely uh, then the rest is to sip that i think uh, that and here uh, when we speak about uh, power of compounding or accumulating let's say how to create 1 crore rupees so here the bigger problem is that uh, i uh, now i may have only 5000 rupees or uh, some people will have only 10000 rupees and uh, we are telling that you can create 1 crore rupees in uh, let's say uh, 15 years and uh, 20 years and all and people are not really uh, interested they want uh, uh, you know much uh, faster uh, this kind of uh, reach goal of 1 crore kind of a thing so what is your suggestion to create 1 crore yeah for a lower income people so people are driven by either reverse gear or fifth gear there is fear and then there is greed this greed pushes them to take undue risk and this fear stops them from taking right risk we need a third party who can balance our greed and fear we need to condition our mind on following a very simple path and this is where sip come into play when you are trading in stock market you are investing in stock market you want multi bagger when markets are correcting and there is covid you get fearful and you go into your shell which is where sip comes handy every month something will get deducted and get invested when you are investing in sip on that form please also write why are you investing my daughter's education my son's marriage my son's business a gold jewelry for my wife my retirement whatever it is and then when markets are volatile your returns are not looking good are negative and you are fearful please go and see that application form do i need to buy jewelry for my wife if answer is no don't read it do i need money for my retirement if answer is no don't read it take emotions out of your investment decisions make it rational very easy to say very difficult to do because all of us are emotional either will be in greed or in fear we need an advisor who can ensure that we are in the middle we need equilibrium okay even here when when we talk about advisor or a distributor and uh, i always ask that uh, you know why do you need an advisor but uh, advise me this one uh, as a distributor what are the key roles i should be doing for my clients first client first i'll come to you nikhil bhai please sell my fund you have to sell what is right for your customer that will be a service to me also second figure out what is the risk profile of customer a doctor will not give a medicine which is allergic to the patient same way i as an advisor cannot give a wrong product to my customer it will create allergy to him or her third i am selling solution not product 
I'm giving you financial security. I'm ensuring your kids' education. I'm ensuring your world travel. I'm not selling SIP. I'm not selling equity mutual fund. I'm not selling thematic fund. Please sell solutions, not products. Please focus on building relationship, not just one transaction. So client first, no wrong selling, no selling. risk profile, risk profiling, Solution. solutions, relationship. That's all it is needed. Okay, okay, that's it. And uh, when we have in Kerala, we have a uh, one thing is that we go behind FDs. And uh, we have a, a lot of FDs which offer much higher return than national uh, bank FDs. It could be NCDs, it could be uh, you know, local banks, FDs and everything. And uh, compared to uh, debt funds, we have a, uh, it could be a, a corporate bond FDs and stuff like that. Uh, and there also we are getting a similar kind of a return. At the same time, there is a fund manager sitting and doing the due diligence. So, what is that offering which mutual fund has for people who are looking for an FD kind of a thing, but they want a more return? So, if you have to take risk, you should take in equity, not in fixed income. Fixed income, return of principal is more important than return on principal. To get 2 rupee extra, you should not lose your 100 rupee which happens in so many Ponzi schemes. I'm sure in Kerala it will be no difference. You will hear this guy looting investors, this guy cheating investors by promising wrong returns. <coughs> so when you want to take risk, take risk in equity, not in fixed income. In fixed income, follow SLR method. Safety first, liquidity second, return last priority. Now, when you come to mutual fund, they give you diversification. If I put all my money in one company and it goes bankrupt, well, there will be trouble. It's far better if I go to mutual fund, my 100 rupee in turn will get diversified over 50, 60 names. Second, there will be a professional managing it. Even if a call goes wrong, hopefully he'll be able to take action in advance rather than afterwards. And this whole packet of professional money management diversification is available at a reasonable price. There's no free lunch. So my recommendation to investors who don't have time, expertise, <coughs> wisdom, knowledge, capabilities to manage money on their own, please use mutual fund as a vehicle. It gives you diversification. It gives you professional management. It is transparent. It is cost effective and most importantly, if you stay invested for a reasonable period of time, it achieves your financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we speak about uh, uh, mutual fund and equity, uh, now we all chase returns. And uh, now if you are starting a SIP, we will go for a small cap or any thematical fund. And I have seen people come and tell that I have diversified. But uh, uh, the fund is invested in all our small cap, but uh, different companies. That is a diversification. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, for you, it's a joke. But <laughs> for uh, clients, they think that it's That's a reality. reality. And what is that opportunity waiting for uh, uh, small cap and uh, thematic fund? And the same day, what is the risk associated with that? So risk is not knowing what you do. If I jump from second floor, and I know my legs and hands can break, then it is not risk, then it's a choice. When you are coming in small cap, please be aware that it is a roller coaster ride. It will go up as well as down. Now, if you are going to jump in between from a roller coaster ride, be sure that your hands and legs will be broken. If you still want to do, then be my guest, it's your choice. But we will not recommend you to do it. If you are risk taker, then yes, SIP in small cap, mid cap is fine. That means you can go through the entire ride of roller coaster. 
But suppose if you are risk averse, then please don't sit on roller coaster. You can go on merry go round. It will give you enough thrill compared to roller coaster because you are fit for that. Nikhil, I'll give you a small example. In COVID time, a colleague of mine called up saying, Nilesh, why please speak to my doctor. The doctor said Nilesh, I had invested in some stocks, mutual fund. Now prices are crashing and I'm losing my sleep. I ask your friend, sell everything and convert into bank FT. I just want peaceful sleep. By God's grace, I'm earning well. But your friend said, I should speak to you. Now, what will you tell a doctor when you yourself are worried about future? You had no idea how COVID was going to play out. So you take straight, simple solution. Dr. Sub, let's meet after three months. Let's talk after three months and then we'll see what happens. Right now, there's too much of uncertainty. Don't do anything. A doctor was speaking with me for the first time. Obviously, he didn't like my answer. He thought, I'm wasting his time. He pushed my friend to sell everything and that got converted into bank FT. In three, four months, he called up again saying, then Nilesh Bhai, what return I will get in bank FT over three years? This market is delivered in three months. Now, what should I do? My immediate answer which came in my mind was, sir, please go to sleep. You didn't want to make money. You wanted to be a peaceful sleep. That's what you are getting. But that would have been unfair. So I asked Dr. Saab, sir, how did you pick up stocks and mutual funds? So he said, no, my patients come and they recommend me. Mm. Now, no patient is stupid enough to ensure that his doctor loses money. Every patient wanted his doctor to make a lot of money. That's why they all gave him high risk, high return idea. Mm. Risk came first, return didn't come. I then recommended him one advisor. So far, I haven't heard anything back from the doctor. That means he's happy. What is my advisor probably doing? He's giving right product to the doctor, which is low volatility and also lower return. But now Dr. Saib is getting peaceful sleep. He believes he's in a comfortable hand. Many a times, Nikhil Bhai, we go to a doctor. You are feeling down when you go there. And a doctor Saib will come and say, Hey, Nikhil, how are you? All well? And suddenly, your disease is half gone. You just feel comfortable that I am in the safe end of a doctor. Now he will take care. The same thing is with financial advisor. And here, uh, now we are doing good market. Uh, now, the only thing is that, is it the right time to sell? And uh, then you, you may not have any goals or anything. But the question is that uh, there is a possibility of coming down. Uh, so. This is a genuine question from the clients. We are getting it. So, uh, how do we see this market and is it a time to sell or is it, uh, how do we take exit call? So, never ever sell because you believe markets are going to go down. No one can predict market. Number two, when you ride roller coaster, it's never going to go up. It has to go down. Then only excitement comes. Same thing is market. Ups and downs are part of the market. You have to live with it. When do you take exit call? When you become over invested in an asset class, in an overvalued market, you must book profit. It's not driven by your desired markets are going to correct. It's driven by your asset allocation that I have more risk than needed and this market is not supportive of risk. Let me put a break and take some money out. I mentioned that for all your investment, put a goal. If you have to achieve that goal, please go and sell. So either you sell because a goal needs to be achieved or you sell because you are taking more risk than needed at that point of time. Yeah, so, uh, answer is uh, gold or a set location. That's, that is the uh, only thing. And uh, when we talk about, um, uh, we have many products now. We have uh, stocks, direct stocks, uh, derivatives. I'm not talking, I think uh, you won't be interested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we have, uh, now we have uh, many things like a small case and everything. And we have PMS, we have AF, and now we have uh, definitely mutual fund. So, do uh, a client need everything? Or, uh, in fact, in mutual fund itself, we have everything. So, what is the need of mixing everything uh, in, in a portfolio? So, Nikhil, it is like our food habit. 
एट होम विल ईट दाल रोटी चावल सब्जी समटाइम्स वी गो आउट टू ईट पंजाबी फूड नॉर्थ इंडियन फूड समटाइम्स वी गो आउट टू ईट अरेबियन फूड इटालियन फूड चाइनीज फूड सो इट ऑल डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर टेस्ट बड और योर रिस्क एपेटाइट योर कोर पोर्टफोलियो विल बी आइथर ब्लू चिप स्टॉक्स विच यू नो वेल और इक्विटी फंड्स रियल एस्टेट गोल्ड एंड डेट फंड्स और डेट प्रोडक्ट्स दिस विल बी योर कोर पोर्टफोलियो they are tailored based on your risk profile they are tailored based on your investment objective now outside of this regular thali you can always have some italian chinese mexican food which is your aif pms thematic sectoral crypto nft but please ensure that they don't become your main thali they are there for satisfying your taste buds you use it once in a while in limited quantity if dessert becomes your main dish then you will be down with diabetes if salad becomes your main dish you will have no taste enjoyment so balance between salad to dessert with main thali okay very nice <laughs> and uh, now we we have our budget has come we have our uh, new government first budget has come and shocker also come and i have uh, heard uh, uh, in your tv also that uh, capital gain has increased so with this new capital gain uh, and uh, even debt also we had uh, earlier itself is taken out uh, indexation and everything so uh, how is your take in terms of taxation for equity market as such and uh, how is how you take it nikhil bhai i heard this from a friend of mine He said, "Nilesh, by ten becoming twelve point five means I have to generate half percent return extra. Instead of crying over this taxation burden, I will put all my energy to get that half percent extra return. I think taxation and death; these are the only certainties of life. Taxation policies will keep on changing. I can't." keep on changing my portfolios to cater to tax requirement yes post tax return matters and you should look at it but beyond a point don't waste your time on how much tax you will have to pay try to generate return because tax is only payable if you make profit i have seen people who in order to save tax end up losing the objective that i have to make money then they incur losses there is no need for tax okay. and here um, uh, nrs we have a lot in kerala right so we have a uh, the question that uh, should i invest here or should i uh, should i invest in india or should i invest there because here tax we need to pay especially in uh, um, middle east region they don't have tax okay. uh, we uh, for their uh, nri fd they don't have tax and coming to debt fund they have a tds and everything they are uh, their return will be lower compared to fd but in equity yeah this higher tax is still makes sense and how is your take on that so nikhil bhai ask nris in uganda kenya uh, people in pakistan bangladesh what happened to them there are disturbances and hence diversification is necessary i'm not saying that put all your money in india you evaluate decision based on post tax return you evaluate decision based on risk and return but please keep diversification in mind in middle eastern countries you are unlikely to become citizen as of today they are all very good and giving excellent treatment to indians a lot of indians have made their wealth over there so some investments you can do over there but also keep in mind the need for diversification god forbid if something goes wrong tomorrow you need to have plan b and that plan b is investment in india which also rewards quite well 
Okay. And uh, when we speak about Kerala as an audience, we have a general public, we have uh, people love for FD, people love for uh, real estate, gold, then people love for lottery also, uh, <laughs> like we discussed. So, uh, what is your advice uh, for a Kerala audience uh, in terms of investing in stock market and mutual fund? So, one, please remember that if lottery buyer starts making money, lottery seller will shut down the business. So, by definition, the scale is tilted against you. A lottery buyer collectively can never ever make money, otherwise lottery seller will shut down the shop. That means you are always on the losing side. You have to go to a place where you are on the winning side, which is equity market. Think equity like partnership with Tata, Birla, Ambani, Adani. I can make Tata my partner by buying one share of Tata Group. That's the mindset which one needs to have. Now, you are buying gold. Fair enough, nothing wrong with it. But when gold was carrying 18% tax incidence, you need to be aware that tomorrow government will reduce import duty. And to that extent, rupee gold prices will come down, which actually happened in the budget. As long as you are aware of that risk in making investment, it is fine. Nikhil Bhai, I am sure in Kerala, like in many parts of India, this culture will be there. There is Akshay Tutya please go and buy some gold. There is Dhanteras, please go and buy some gold. There is anniversary, please buy some gold. There is birthday, please buy some gold. Many people buy small quantity of gold, 1 gram, 2 gram, 5 gram, 10 gram. What is the transaction cost? 20, 30, 40 percent. You are going to lose 30, 40 percent when you buy gold in smaller denomination. Why are you making that mistake? I am sure in Kerala also housewives will be doing this. They do monthly investment plan with jeweller. I still remember in Mumbai there was a very popular jeweller called Goodwin Jewellers among Malayalis of Mumbai. One day that guy just disappeared. How many housewives lost money? Tons of money got lost. Why are you doing this? If you want to buy gold on an auspicious occasion, please buy but not in smaller denomination paying 30%, 40% tax or transaction cost. Please buy gold ETF. Your transaction cost will be half a percent, one percent. When you want to do SIP with a jeweler, I mean you essentially want to buy gold, not the jeweler. Please do in gold ETF. At least you will be sure that you will get your money back and it will not be like Goodwin jeweler who disappeared. So, Keep your objective same, but please apply right risk management processes. Even here, uh, mutual fund, uh, when we invest, we are not touching the gold. That is our one, <laughs> one uh, problem which we, we, we have that block. Nikhil Bay, I fully appreciate. But please understand how mutual fund work. I am holding gold on your behalf in secured vault. That, that's it's protected by insurance. If you are put gold in bank locker and someone, you know, empties it, there is no protection. Bank is not responsible for your locker. But in my vault, if gold disappears, there is an insurance policy to protect you. What is more safer? My vault is more safer than your bank, depot, bank locker. So please put it in mutual fund. Okay. And uh, we'll take one question because this is a relevant question I have uh, got. Uh, uh, from one of my clients. I was having an interview like this, uh, you know, someone who is very senior and we discussed about the risk of uh, uh, investing in mutual fund. We said that very clearly that uh, mutual fund, there is no guarantee, but it's a regulated system. Your unit is same, market price you can't really guarantee. And this person, he has completely invested in uh, real estate. And after hearing that interview, he stopped uh, uh, discussion. He said that you know, Nigel itself said that uh, mutual fund is risky and uh, not guaranteeing anything. And what is your take on that answer? And uh, what is the protection we are getting from the regulation? So, Nikhil Bhai, we believe Satya Meva Jaite. 
many years back when I was working in Templeton, I had gone to meet someone in Kolkata. Bada Bazaar area where traditional Marwadi businessmen used to sit. As I entered in this elderly gentleman's office, he said, how much guaranteed return you give? And honestly, I replied, I don't give any guaranteed return. I take money, I manage to the best of my ability and then whatever is the return, I deliver it to you after my cutting my expenses. And he got very wild and furious. You people come to waste my time. You don't give guaranteed return. If I shout from my window, I will get people who are willing to pay 3% interest rates. Why should I even entertain you? I knew the meeting was over, so I was just walking out. But that was young age. So then I turned around to the person and said, Sir, can I ask you a question? I said, Pucho. I said, you look rich. So, you know, you must have started working early, like all it happens in a business family. He said, yeah, yeah, I started working when I was very young. And uh, I said, sir, you believe you are getting 3% return a month when you lend? He said, yes. So I said, sir, in my opinion, if you were generating 36% return per year for so many years, you should be owning the entire world. But as I remember, you forget America, you don't even own India. Forget India, you don't even own Kolkata. Forget Kolkata, you don't even own Bada Bajar. Forget Bada Bajar, you don't even own this building. So what are you shouting at? You have not generated 36% return per year. Obviously, he was surprised. And he said, look, son, I am not lying. I said, sure, sir, I don't say you are lying. But you are missing a point. You are giving money at 36% return and you are only getting interest. You never get back your principal. So your overall return keeps on coming down. There are people who give you high return, but they don't return principal. In mutual fund, I don't give guaranteed return. But at least I will take care to ensure that most of the time I will return principal. Exceptionally, I may end up losing your principal also. But please remember, if you would have done directly, you would have definitely lost far more than what I will lose. So, mentally we are prepared to trust people. If someone says, I will deliver you 3% return, we believe in it, that oh, he will deliver. But there is no free lunch. Risk and return goes handy. If you want 3% return, prepare to lose capital. If the person is saying, I have no guaranteed return, then understand how he is managing risk, what is he doing, and then invest. So, because we are regulated by SEBI, because we believe we owe to our investors, we don't make false promises. Our track record over the last 20-30 years is a testimony of what we are capable of delivering. And people will have to build that trust and confidence on us through their distributor or advisor. Thank you. Thank you. I think it is a very insightful talk with you. And I know that uh, uh, so many questions, but I think next time when, when you come to Kerala, we can again talk on it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, personally, I, I, I feel it's a blessing that I got a time uh, with you. And uh, your uh, your team has had decided to set up meeting in Kochi, and that is the reason <laughs> um, uh, I got you. Uh, my audience got you, and uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, taking time out. Any final comments uh, for today? So, I will end the talk by saying that all of us know what is the right thing to do. We should not eat junk food. We should exercise regularly but it's difficult to do. The way we know what is right thing for physical health and yet we don't do it, same thing applies for financial health. We all know income minus savings should be expenses. We all know little drops of water make an ocean. Regular investment will build my retirement nest. 
we all know disciplined investment makes sense. Don't put all eggs in one basket. We all know we have to be a long term investors to make money, to earn compounding benefit. And yet we are not able to follow it. We either become greedy or we become fearful, which is where you need a distributor and advisor like Nikhil Bhai who can maintain equilibrium for you, who can tell you what is the right path. And when you deviate from that right path, who can nudge and bring you back on the right path. Get financial freedom. In our previous generation, they thought kids were their retirement solution. I am sure all your kids are going to take very good care of you. But why take chance? Because every rule has an exception. Be financially secure. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm sure that uh, these days a lot of uh, uh, knowledge uh, comes around and a lot of uh, seriousness also comes from uh, people. And this talk definitely give a lot of insights and uh, make everyone uh, serious about uh, investing and uh, thinking about their retirement and financial freedom. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.